nothing you tried was working. So then your thought was, I'm going to contact Dan. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, who is smart in SEO? And after I reached out to those people, I was like, well, Dan, <laughs> maybe Dan's right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Last week, Brian Dean reached out to me with a problem. Just got a message from the one and only Backlinko. Uh, the problem was basically this. He just published a brand new post, a big guide that was live for three hours, but had not been indexed yet. It's been like three hours. He did a fetch and render. He knows Google's crawled it. Now the kicker was that scraper sites that have scraped his content are indexed in Google. Before I go any further, uh, a lot of you might be thinking, well, big deal. This is Backlinko, it's Brian Dean, they'll probably index it, you know, within 12 to 24 hours. And we thought the same thing as well, but I actually caught up with Brian after all of this. Dan. Hey, man. Uh-oh, he's frozen. You're a little frozen there, buddy. Oh. You with me? And I gained his perspective as to why this was really important for him to figure out. All it would take is someone to actually scrape the whole thing, post it on their site, and it's a possibility that they would be considered the original author. Oh, they'd be indexed well ahead of me. That was more my concern. Ah, uh, so you're So the concern really lied more in the fact that Brian was, number one, worried that Google would not ever give him full credit for his content. But then number two, as SEOs, we really wanted to take this weird mystery as an opportunity to learn. And boy, did we learn some stuff. As I got back here into my office and started going through uh, his site, started diagnosing the problems, I went through a series of things. My first goal was to determine if Brian's content had been crawled or was crawlable at all. And so a few things checked out. Number one, a screaming frog, perfectly fine. <laughs> screaming frog. A screaming frog crawl, perfectly fine. It's crawlable, I threw it in screaming frog. Number two, a mobile friendly, testing in, <laughs> fetching it in the mobile friendly tool, perfectly fine. It is able to be fetched in the mobile friendly report. I even checked to make sure that Brian had submitted uh, in Google Search Console as smartphone and then submitting the index. My, my thought maybe is Google has moved him over to the mobile first index. Further developments, uh, Brian did submit it as a smartphone and, and, and submitted for indexation in Google. So perfectly fine. Then my mind went to indexation. Uh, first of all, I confirmed that the page was in fact not indexed. Yeah, look at that. It is not indexed. Maybe he saw it in a different database than myself. I searched, did a site search, did a URL search, nothing. The funny thing is in how Brian found the scraper sites. When I searched uh, for snippets of the post from the intro, scraper sites were ranking. Uh, checking things out a little bit further, I made sure there was not a no index tag on the page itself. There's no no index tag on it. Perfectly fine. I made sure that he had the correct canonical tags. Perfectly fine. Uh, I then went and checked Bing. It's not indexed on Bing either, which points to it maybe actually being a problem with with the piece of content. Yahoo. Wow, Yahoo is ugly. It's not in Yahoo. And DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. One thing I do know about Google and how indexation works is there's indexing and then there's the appearance of being indexed and what i mean by that is they basically have a filter where if they see content that they think is it's my lunch they see content that they think is the same or duplicate but they have just a filter that takes out the duplicate results so you don't search something and see like 10 results from the same domain or you don't see the same 10 articles published in different places when I searched, so when you search Google for um, site backlinko.com mobile SEO, which is the topic of his new article that's not being indexed, an article shows up called SEO in 2018, the definitive guide. Now, the title tag for his new post today is mobile SEO, the definitive guide 2018. So with the exception of the word mobile, the title tag's actually kind of similar. So I could see where- And my line of thinking here was, maybe there's some lightweight signals that Google uses before they have all the information about a new piece of content that they use to kind of kick in and out different uh, duplicate content filters. In fact, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna show you this quick 
clip of Paul Haar from Google explaining how this process works. And then we do some post-retrieval adjustments. This is looking at diversity by hosts, looking at how much duplication there is, looking at how much duplication there is. We generate snippets. That's what led me to looking at Brian's slash blog page. What is the last thing you did that we think was the solution? Well, I did two things, and I would say it could have been one or both. My gut is that like your solution is what did it. What you had recommended, which was brilliant, was you pointed out the slash blog hadn't been, uh, had been cached the day before and hadn't been updated, so I should go in and ask them to index that page and also follow the links. And when I noticed that that page had not been recached with the new blog post and had not been crawled since then, that's when I had Brian submit slash blog to fetch and render and then submit all linked pages to the index. That's gonna force recrawl the blog. And within seconds, that's when we saw things fixed. It's great news, it's cached and it's now indexed as well. I should note one other thing Brian did try to do. I'm gonna have him explain that. The other thing I did was because the scraper sites were scraping my intro, I was like, well, what if I change the intro? Because if it's a duplicate content issue, oh. they might see those scraper sites as the original author and me as the scraper. So just to be on the safe side, I also changed the intro. I don't think that did it, but it's possible that it, it contributed. Uh, we'll talk about what happened after it got indexed, which is also interesting. But, but as you can see, we don't think that that was actually the fix. There is one more thing. This is actually not the end of the story. After we got his blog post back in the index, Brian then went to Google. I searched in Google for mobile SEO, which is my target keyword. And this is what he saw. It was already ranking like four or five. Wow. So it, so it was amazing how fast it went from like, it's not in our index, and um, all of a sudden it's like the fifth best result for this keyword. They're holding back. They had those signals in place, whatever, you, whatever they are and they're unleashed at that moment. Now, I do have one final mystery, and this is a question for you, anyone out there. We're wondering why we saw this weird error in the Google Search Console report when we tried to submit the page, request indexation, and then it was giving this error message back. Uh, here it is right here. We're not sure if this has something to do with the actual inde indexation issue. If you have any thoughts about that, myself and Brian will be reading every single comment below. Sorry, Brian, I just committed you to that and, and you didn't know about it. Uh, okay, hope you enjoyed. It was your you know, re-indexing the slash blog that did the trick. This here I'm making, by the way, is yerba mate. I like to make it with the traditional gourd and straw with a little filter there. Brings a good kick.